With Suicide Squad being turned into an Isekai, it makes me wonder, is there an equivalent of the MCU or DCEU in anime? According to a YouTuber named Grant, the closest thing to it is the ever-expanding Toaru franchise, a series formed of multiple light novels, manga, anime and games, focusing primarily on a huge conflict between magic and science. But is this claim legit? Not only will I be introducing this incredible franchise to you, I will also be exploring how similar is the Toaru universe to these endless superhero media conveyor belts. I'm pretty sure all of you will be familiar with cinematic universes nowadays, unless you've been living under a rock for 15 years. Legit, that might be a blessing in disguise. Then for those of you who don't have a clue what a Toaru Aru is, allow me to explain. Toaru, or a certain in English, started off with the main story in the series known as a certain magical index, with its first light novel volume making its debut back in 2004. The story combined elements of sci-fi and fantasy, depicting a parallel world to our own, with a futuristic twist in the form of Index's central location, Academy City. Academy City is the home of the science side, with advanced technology 20 years ahead of the rest of the world and renowned for developing psychic ability users known as espers. I guess you could compare them to the X-Men or mutants. Outside of the city-state walled off from the rest of the world exists the magic side formed of the major European churches and many magic cabals of different religions and ideologies. And of course, the two sides naturally clash against each other due to being fundamentally opposed to one another. Then you throw in a cast of lovable characters, each with their own individual development arcs or quirky traits which make them awesome, along with earth-shattering fights which involve strategy rather than getting mind-numbing training arcs and bullshit power-ups you see in other anime and the icing on the cake being some of the most fascinating and imaginative world building I've ever read. It's my favourite series for a reason. Okay, the plot is cool and all with two unique power systems that operate alongside one another, but what makes it even comparable to the MCU? It is because it has a shared universe due to having many different spin-offs and side stories, following a variety of protagonists and characters, with each one of these stories enhancing and supplementing the main story of Index. Well, at least most of them. Take the most popular spin-off of Index, which is arguably more popular than the main story itself. Yep, you can thank the anime adaptations for that. Anyway, a certain scientific railgun follows one of the main heroines of Index, Misaka Mikoto, in the lead role, focusing on the science side of the Toaru universe. While the main character of Index, Kamijo Toma, also features in Railgun, he has more of a supporting role. The overall timeline of these stories make this series stand out, as rather being a prequel or sequel, Railgun occurs simultaneously during the same time frame. It even takes two arcs from Index and changes things to put a different spin on it, showing plenty of content we didn't even get to see in the main story, all from Misaka's point of view. Since the Toaru universe is ever expanding with even more spin-offs being confirmed, such as a certain Dark Side's item and the third installment of Index known as Genesis Testament ongoing, it feels like the franchise has a limitless amount of potential and stories to tell due to its giant cast of characters. Much like how these superhero movie universes have an endless pool of material to adapt to the big screen from the comics, for better or for worse. Having this crazy ass universe with an endless library of books to read, much like the list of prohibited books herself, undoubtedly does deter many potential fans from checking out the series. I'm sure it's something comic book fans can also relate to when trying to get other people into them as you can't exactly binge so much content overnight. I guess I'll call it One Piece Syndrome. But at the same time, it gives series like Index a unique appeal when compared to Dead and Buried 12 episode seasonal anime you'll say is great, amazing while it's airing, and then forget about it 
three months later. If you happen to check out the Index Light novel, either on a whim or a recommendation by yours truly, you should know that it's way better than the anime. You might happen to enjoy it, then you read the next volume, and then the next one, and then a spin-off, and a side story, until you become hooked and a consumer like me, and then you're too far down the rabbit hole that there's no escape. Ah, I'm doing such a good job making it sound appealing. While it's not as popular over here in the West, the Toe Aru series was actually the best-selling light novel franchise of all time for years, until it was recently dethroned by Tensura, aka the Slime Isekai, making Index one of the goats of the light novel industry in Japan. So, I won't pretend that Toe Aru isn't here to make bank from all these sale numbers and entries into the franchise. Meanwhile, the superhero movies are always trying to do the same thing, as the producers think it's an infinite pool of money they can generate from just having a well-known superhero on the posters along with some fanboy inducing cameos in the movie. Doesn't always go according to plan. Yeah, I'm not going to compare box office flops to light novel sales. While it is a known fact that Index's sale numbers have decreased, that's mainly because digital sales aren't reported for some reason. And with physical media dying a painful death across the board worldwide, whether it's books or DVDs, it's unsurprising the figures are down. The thing is, while many Marvel fans were under the impression the series had a clear vision for the future with the build up to Infinity War, the movies and TV shows after Endgame have been hit or miss according to most fans. And there just seems to be an obvious lack of direction with the overarching narrative, making it seem like the movies are just an attempt to make more easy, easy money, money due to the narrative being ambiguous at this moment in time. This is probably because the MCU lost its direction at after the climax of Endgame. It also has many different people working on it with different visions of what the characters should be, which can throw a spanner in the works of the long-term plan. This isn't really the case with Toe Aru, as pretty much the entire franchise is written by the ultimate mastermind, who likely is just an advanced AI named Kamachi Kazuma. Although admittedly, the editor of the Railgun manga did note that the manga artists who work on the spin-offs often just receive general plot notes from Kamachi, with the manga curfilling in the blanks in the story for him. But having the franchise, an entire project, just under one person's creative vision, not only makes it feel a lot more consistent in quality with every entry, and it doesn't feel like it's just there to make a quick book. It isn't a vanity project, as they actually give a shit about this universe and where the story is going. Index isn't the only franchise in Japanese weeb media to have an extensive list of entries in it, and an overly complex universe that only losers like me would make a dedicated YouTube channel about. The Fate series is another equally as vast and arguably more successful franchise than To Aru, especially when you take into account the mobile gacha game Fate Grand Order into equation, with it having reported to have grossed over $6 billion from launch to 2020. 22. My god, the things people will do to get their favourite waifu. That's more than what Infinity War and Endgame grossed at the box office combined. Numbers aside, I guess what makes Fate this similar to the cinematic universes is that it mainly concentrates on alternate timelines with as many different entries rather than having one self-contained time frame like To Aru. I guess you could say there's many different what-ifs. Perhaps you could class it as a multiverse of alternate versions of characters and, oh god, maybe Fate really is more like the MCU. Screw across the Spider-Verse, when are we getting into the Saberface verse I guess I have no other choice but to talk about the multiverse stuff. Honestly, in comic book movies now, it just seems like you can't avoid any multiverse stuff at all. It seems like a convenient way for the writers to justify any bullshit plot points that would traditionally be impossible to write by the logic of the fictional world. While I alluded to Index being a self-contained timeline slash universe, it is a bit more complicated as technically it does have a pseudo multiverse in the world, with countless layers of reality overlapping the physical universe, each acting as a different version of it. But this concept is used sparingly in the light novels and definitely doesn't involve dumb cameos or alternate versions of characters entering the fray just to make easy, easy money. money. So Index's multiverse known as the phases aren't really anything like the multiverses you see in superhero movies. For one, it's written in a much more unique way. Index definitely does have moments in the volumes where characters team up who now have their own individual stories making it similar to the superhero team ups when they do have 
happen. If anything, I'd argue that in terms of the parallel universes overlapping, Index doesn't really fit the criteria. However, what does is perhaps what is known as the Kamachi-verse, named after the mad genius author of Index himself. This is definitely what I would class as Kamachi's version of the Avengers, where all the different series he wrote enter the same world, featuring in crossover light novels and a manga, to unite and deal with some sort of threat, cause yeah, I, I, I don't know, I haven't read them. Hey, I'm not a fraud. I should probably read all of Kamachi's works one day, even if the crossovers aren't canon, just for the sake of curiosity. If you've read them, let me know what you think. While it is impossible to find an exact replica of these comic book movie franchises in anime, Toaru is arguably the closest thing to it, as it's kinda impossible to compare a cinematic universe to series, which is predominantly novels, with some manga and anime adaptations. Nevertheless, if you are interested in checking out some Thing that will give you a deep dive of endless content in the same contained universe that is super underrated, I can't recommend Toaru enough, whether that is the anime or the masterpiece that is the light novel. If you'd like to learn more about Toaru, make sure you subscribe and check out these videos on screen right now.